Negotiating a BDSM scene with a partner should be something that's fun and exciting and sexy that brings you all closer together. Hi, I'm Steven with Ethical Seduction, and we help you get what you want, both in and out of the bedroom. Negotiating a BDSM scene can really be daunting to some people, but I want to help you think of it as something fun and easy to do as a way of having a conversation with another person. Step one is really just asking the other person if they're interested in playing. So you go up, you ask them like, hey, I really kind of like you, I'm interested in playing, would you like to play? If they say no, you can just, don't pressure them, just say, you know, no problem, if you're ever interested, let me know. That takes a lot of the pressure off but hopefully they'll say yes. And if they do say yes, then you all can start to figure out what are some connecting things, the interests that you both share, that you're both interested in doing. So step two is about finding those common interests. So ask the person, throw something out there. What do you think about spanking? Is that of interest to you? What do you think about maybe being tied up in rope? Just get their thoughts and hear what they have to say. If they say it's not an interest, that's great. You can push it aside. But as soon as you find something that you're both interested in, that's gonna help start shaping and directing the scene that you're trying to kind of create with them. I also wanna suggest that you ask about things like bondage. So it's like, do you trust me to go ahead and tie you up? Not everybody, especially on a first scene, is gonna be comfortable with that, but it's worth asking if you're interested in it. Uh, and that really is about trust. So if they say yes, you know, great. If the person's on the fence and they're not sure if they wanna do that, just take that as a no, at least for now, for this, for, for this first scene. It's something you can always come back to later when they're more comfortable. That's really gonna help you out. You don't want anybody to feel pressured. You want everybody to be enthusiastic. Another tip in having this conversation is to ask the person, like, what are they trying to get out of the experience? What do they like? And what are they hoping to kind of have? Or what do they, why do they like to be spanked? What's the appeal on that? If you can figure that out, that can really help a lot with like what you're wanting to do and how you can interact with them. It gives you a lot of guidance. But also, not everybody's aware of that. That's a question that not everybody kind of thinks about. They know like, oh, I know I like to be spanked, but they're not always necessarily aware of why. So if that you bring that up, again, that could be something fun to kind of sit down and talk about and like think about. But if they don't know the answer, that, that's okay too. That's fairly normal. And then also it's important to ask about like, where can I touch you? you know, or where is okay for the other person to touch you. Those are important things. So a lot of people will be like, yes, you can touch my shoulders, my arms, that's all fine. A lot of people might say, yes, you, you can touch my butt. Not everybody's gonna say you can touch my genitals. And so you need to kind of find out and you need to ask that stuff up front. Again, knowing the boundaries is gonna let you shape that scene and that scene is what's gonna create trust and it's gonna help you connect for those next future scenes that hopefully you'll get to do. Also, health issues are an important thing to ask about. Sometimes I'll forget to ask on the very first conversation and that's fine, it doesn't need to be on the very first conversation, but at some time before you all actually start to play and do things, you should check in and be like, hey, how are you feeling tonight? You know, do you, uh, anything, any health issues I need to be aware of? Do you have things like diabetes or blood pressure? Uh, things like that, you know, just ask them, what do you maybe need to be aware of to keep in mind when you play? Again, whatever they say, that helps edit that scene. You can kind of change things. So somebody might not be, might not have the flexibility in their arms to have a certain tie or whatever. And you, you know, if you can know that up front, that helps. Step three is really refining your ideas. After you kind of collect these things and you get these shared ideas, step three is gonna to be to determine which ones we wanna do for the first scene and what others are great ideas, but are really better to kind of put off until later for future scenes. So in the very beginning, you really wanna have a good experience. You want the other person to learn to feel safe and trusted. And so it's really best to kind of like pick things that they like, but a lot of it is gonna be your interaction with their interaction. That's gonna be probably exciting enough to make it an interesting scene on the first time. You don't have to do everything that's great. So get those things, create a nice trusting scene in the, for the very first one. And then the other fun, crazy ideas that you have, that's stuff you can build to when the other person's ready or when you find the timing is right. So you know, come up with ideas, but don't feel like you have to do everything that first time. It's great to have stuff to look forward to tease your partner about it. Give them something to look forward to. 
Step four is just finding a time and a place to play. So if you're lucky enough, like we are with Ethical Seduction, you might have a club that you can go to, it's a public place. And while that might sound scary at first, public places are usually the safest. One, you have the most experienced people there. Two, it's public and you're gonna have like safety people that are just around. So if anything goes wrong, people are there to come help you out. So the public places, clubs, things like that are often the, the best and the safest. But if you can't, and not everybody has that as an option in their town, and not everybody wants to do that or is comfortable with that, if you can't, it's fine to like m agree to meet somebody, you know, at a place that they can do, but always have basically a safe call. So always have a friend who knows like where you are and they've got you know contact information, they know the address of where you're gonna be and they know you're gonna check in. So at a certain time, you're gonna call, or you're, I would say call, don't necessarily text, but call you know, and just be able to check in and have a conversation and say, yes, everything was great, I'm fine. And if you don't check in by that time, they're calling the police or they're doing whatever they need to do to come make sure that you're safe. So in conclusion, just set up something that is fun. It doesn't have to do everything on the first scene. You really are wanting the person to like, you know, have a great time and learn to trust you and to want to have more. So set that up and just enjoy yourselves. That's what this is all about. What ideas do you have for a great first kink scene or BDSM scene? I would love to hear your ideas if you leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, give us a like, hit subscribe, and check out our other videos. Thanks.